So today I thought we would take a look at this DCM Disable Kit that I bought for my 8th gen Honda Accord. So I have a 2010 Honda Accord that I want to disable the VCM or the cylinder deactivation. And this is a VCM muzzler or disable kit. It'll stop the eco light or the eco mode from coming on on the dash. That of course deactivates some of the cylinders. So I thought this kit was cheap enough to definitely try out and see if it'll help with some of the minor oil consumption that these V6s are known to have issues with, with this variable cylinder management. This little kit does come with the instructions, which I was impressed with. It's a very simple procedure, but they did highlight how to install it very well. And by the way, they also sell the connectors in other places, but just the connector for the ECT-1 itself is um, more than half what this kit cost. And then you don't have to search for the other mating connector, if you know what I mean. So it also comes with the resistors and connector. And I also bought these little small project boxes that I thought would be handy. I don't want the resistor and connector just laying around. Um, so I'm definitely going to put it in a housing. So I'm going to try these and they snap together pretty well. So I may even put a little bit of glue on it. We'll see. But today is just a preliminary check anyway. So see if these connectors fit. And I think that's going to work okay. But I also want to protect the wires. So I do have some of this split loom corrugated wire tubing. And I'm just going to cut a little bit of this quarter inch size and we'll see that later. We'll put it on there, but I'm going to decide now if I want to use this or like the Wago connectors. Um, I've used these Wagos for years now and I like them a lot. And I recently bought these inline ones because they're handy with stuff like this as well. And I just feel like they might be a better match here because you don't have to worry about something getting pressed or mashed and getting the loose connections. So they gave us four resistors for this little kit here. We have a 68 ohm, the 82, the 100, and the 120 ohm resistor. I'm probably going to start with the 82, honestly, just to give it a try. Um, somewhere in the middle. So I'll take this 68 and I'll uh, bend it. We'll clip it. And I'll just see how it would fit in the connector that comes with it. Because you might be interested if, if you're going to use that connector that comes with this kit. So you just push the little levers, the spring loaded, and just push it in like so. So I'm going to make it really, really low profile. So it would have fit in my little project box like so. And this actually would work. It probably would give no issue. But I think I am going to go with the Wegos because I like the way the lever nut is. And it's, it's no way possible for the lever nut to open up and release. Once you push that lever down and put it inside that little case, So here I'm just showing the 82 ohm resistor in like a Z pattern here to make this as small as possible. And it's simply just breaking the black wire and we're just putting the 82 ohm in series. So it's going to decrease our signal from our ECT1 or engine coolant temperature 1 sensor. And I think that's going to work just fine. Let's make sure the case will snap back together. And there we go. I might have shorten up that black wire just a little but It'll be fine for trying out. And by the way, we might want to silicone this. So I do have some electronics grade silicone here. If I do decide to put some silicone around the connector and the resistor to protect it from the elements. I'm definitely going to run this for quite some time before I go that far. But I think either one of these connectors are fine for at least just testing out. I'm going to go ahead and cut some of this tubing. It's split so it just slides on. It'll also pop off easy, but we can put some 3M 33 plus tape around the edges so we can tape it up well when we get ready to install this permanently. There we go. I think that'll be okay for testing. But I do want to go ahead and ohm it out and make sure the connections are good. So the black wire should have the 82 ohm resistor in line with it so yep 83 ohms perfect 
Uh, while I'm at it, let's go ahead and just make sure the red wire is making a good connection since I did not crimp the wire on these ends on the connector. All right, I like it. And we got these other resistors we can test with as well. And I have many resistors also in between if need be, but apparently this is the ones the manufacturer thinks is the most commonly used. So before we put this on, let's do a test and see what the gauge is at normal operating temperature. And this is my ECT1 reading on the gauge. Before we disable it, if you'll notice the needle is almost touching or right at touching the bottom white line on the gauge. And here is our ECT1 connector and the sensor right here. I believe we can get to it fine without removing this engine cover. As you can see here, we have a mating connector and here is our little lever, the push. So you might not can see it, but I gotta push that lever and wiggle up and it pops right off like so. And we just gotta put this in line. So back on the wire that came off. And as you can see here, I label mine. So I'm not the only one who knows what this box is. And I'm going to try to get out of the way so you can see me on camera with my fingertips. Hopefully plug this up. Yeah, it snapped on there. There we go. Hopefully you can see that okay. It just snaps right back on the ECT1 sensor. And I did not have to remove the engine shroud or cover on mine. But some models may have to. And yeah, my wire protector here needs to be taped on. I'll get that later when I install this permanently. But I'm just going to push this down out of the way for now. But I do want to make sure that the label is up so you can tell what that little box is. And now let's test it out. So now after making a trip with the car and it gets up to normal operating temperature with the 82 ohm resistor, the gauge is reading here. And I will put these side by side. So it's about a gauge needle thickness below where it used to be. As we can see the before on the left and after on the right, that resistor does knock the signal down. And after a few weeks of running the car, the eco light does not come on. So it really is just that simple. I might have to play around with the resistors and see. And uh, you can look for any updates down in the video description of anything I find as the seasons may change. It's spring at this time in Georgia. And as the temperature changes, I might have to change resistors. I'm not 100% sure yet. But I hope you found this video helpful on just how easy it is to deactivate the VCM on the 8th gen Honda V6. And I'll have a link down in the video description for this muzzle harness disable kit shown in this video if you find it helpful. There are many different types out there. I chose one of the cheapest ones to try out and just see how well it works. But I did also decide to buy the little project box to help protect the uh, connections. So I have a link to these down in the video description as well as the Wago terminals that I like to use for a lot of projects. I'll also include the split wire loom tubing. You can get the multiple size or just a quarter inch, whichever you prefer. I'll also show the silicone, the electronics grade silicone that I chose to use and use on many electronics projects. And I'll also have links to many other tools and helpful items that I use on my bench that you'll see in a lot of my videos. Any of those links you click on are affiliate links and they help support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching and God bless.